Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is an arrest made in connection to the kidnapping and sexual assault of a nine year old girl from Farmington Hills. I'm Evrod Kasimi on your Thursday afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Local 4 News at noon. Now, here's what we know about this story. That little girl was abducted as she walked down the street on Sunday and then was taken to a home in Detroit and assaulted. Detroit police announced that arrest just a little while ago. Let's get out to our Rob Maloney. He joins us now this afternoon with more on what we know. Rod. Yeah, good afternoon, Evrod. You know, this is a case that started Sunday afternoon. The young child walked away from her home and apparently in a fight with her mother, the rest of the family took a nap and she left. She had a blanket and a pillow and left the house because she was trying to find a, a gaming device because she had, she had had a fight with her mother over this gaming device. So she left the house. And so she's walking down the street in the area of Eight Mile and Grand River and she runs into the man in a white renegade, a white Jeep renegade. And we're going to show you that picture now. That's the picture of the vehicle that the man allegedly drove in picking her up. Police, that's FBI, DPD, Farmington Hills Police have been looking for the driver of that vehicle since Sunday because the man turned out to be an opportunistic child rapist. He saw this child and then drove her over to the area of Berg Road in Trojan, which is over off of Telegraph, not particularly far from where she was picked up. We're told that he bound her hands and feet and then raped her and uh, somehow the child got away. That's when people found her in the afternoon on Sunday. Some uh, people in that neighborhood who saw her walking naked with just a blanket around her asking for help. They called police. They brought it in. They did the uh, investigation, brought the child to the hospital. The uh, hospital examination showed that she had been assaulted, and that's when this manhunt began. And so where we are now is the DPD is saying that there is finally an arrest in this case. But that's all we know at this point. They're saying that they don't expect to have a press conference on this to talk about all the details until tomorrow morning. And so right now we're still looking to get more information. But as it stands, there is some comfort in the knowledge that there is an arrest in this case and we're going to have to find out more details come tomorrow reporting live downtown rod maloney local four all right ron thank you for keeping us updated there our other top story here at noon four security guards are charged in the death of a man at northland mall the guards are accused of restraining mackenzie cochran back in 2014. witnesses reported hearing cochran say that he couldn't breathe Let's get out to our Priya man. She joins us now live this afternoon. And Priya, I understand the Attorney General, Dana Nessel, just announced this big development in the case. Yeah, that's right, Everett. A.G. Nessel was joined by the Southfield Police Chief as well as the Oakland County Prosecutor. This case getting another review and now new charges. Take a look. Mackenzie Cochran died from compression asphyxia on the floor of the Northland Shopping Mall in Southfield in 2014. Now, Cochran was asked to leave the mall after an employee reported he'd been acting suspiciously around a jewelry store. While struggling with security guards, Cochran was pepper sprayed and pinned to the ground. A.G. Nessel says a 25-year-old told security guards he could not breathe because of the way he was positioned on the ground. Well, seven years ago, then Oakland County Prosecutor Jesse, Jessica Cooper did not pursue criminal charges, saying there was no intention to kill and no chokehold by guards. Well, that changed last year when Cochran's family asked Southfield Police Chief Elvin Barron to review the case a second time. Chief Barron took another look at the investigation, decided to send it to the AG's office. The four security guards have now been charged with one count of involuntary manslaughter each. Two were arraigned Wednesday at 46th District Court. Here's what Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald had to say. It's a tragic, tragic death. But we have moved forward as a community, as a state, as a country, and we no longer uh, swipe these things to the side when we know there has been wrongdoing. Our job is to do everything possible to bring justice to these, to, to these victims, and in this case, Mackenzie Hochran. Now, coming up tonight, we're going to hear more from A.G. Nessel as well as Southfield Police Chief Alvin Barron. Uh, two of those defendants are expected to be arraigned in court this afternoon. We'll have much more coming up tonight. Reporting live in downtown Detroit, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya. And speaking of Attorney General Nessel, she also announced charges in an Ann Arbor cold case involving the disappearance of a baby. Investigators say that Isaiah Williams took his nine-month-old daughter, Elisa, from her mother during a physical fight back in April of 1982, and that was the last time Elisa's mother saw her daughter alive. The child was never found and is now believed to be dead. The AG's office has charged Isaiah Williams with murder 
Investigators believe that he killed the baby as an act of control over her mother. Williams is being extradited from Chicago. Well, it's a big day for booster shots. Right now, the FDA's vaccine advisory panel is meeting to discuss the safety and necessity of a booster dose of the Moderna vaccine. Well, this morning, the panel of independent experts heard data from Israel's Ministry of Health. Israel started offering boosters back in July. Shortly after starting the booster dose uh, at the age uh, group of 60 plus, we saw a decrease uh, in the number of uh, confirmed cases among that group. Uh, whereas the other groups, age 60, age 60 and below, um, were continuing to rise. The panel will also hear data from Moderna and FDA scientists. The committee will also vote this afternoon on Moderna burst boosters for those over the age of 65 and those age 18 and up who are at a high risk for severe COVID or have a higher risk of exposure on the job. The committee will also discuss but not vote on whether Moderna boosters should be considered for those age 18 and up who do not fall into any of those categories. So we're going to have the results for you on the vote and highlights from the meeting tonight at 4, 5 and 6 o'clock. Now let's take a look at more of your coronavirus headlines this afternoon. There is some positive news as far as the economy is concerned. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits fell to its lowest level since the pandemic began. Claims dropped to 293,000 last week. Still businesses are struggling to find workers with 3 million people still out of work. This is happening as cases continue to trend up here in our state. Just slightly yesterday, the state reported a two day total of 8,671 new cases. That's an average of 4,335 new cases per day, and we lost another 110 lives. Well, let's talk about the forecast for you on your Thursday afternoon, or as we like to call it, Brandon, Friday Eve. We might yes. see some storms pop up this afternoon across the area. Well, I think the afternoon will be much like the morning in that the wet weather is elsewhere. Uh, glancing blow, perhaps west and north zones and up near the Tri-Cities. But you can see the general trend has been across southwestern, western, lower into parts of central Michigan and temperatures are responding where we're a little drier here on the east side 76 flint 73 metro 75 in adrian but upper 60s to low 70s with some of that rain cooled air western lower for most of the afternoon i think mostly dry but yes a spotty shower or two folds in and don't cancel your plans. Keep the local forecasters app handy. Middle upper 70s through your afternoon. And there are some gaps or holes in some of these clouds, allowing for a little milky sunshine. But again, late in the day, more like tonight, some of that wet weather to our west will fold in. So a wetter night than an afternoon. Okay. We'll look at your Friday and weekend, Ev, right ahead. Oh, very important. We'll check in with Brandon in just a little bit. Remember that large African cat that escaped from a home in Royal Oak? We told you about this yesterday. Well, now that cat has been found. And thank goodness, the African caracal cat named Bam Bam was one of four cats that had actually gotten out of its enclosure at a home on LaSalle, right near 13 Mile in Rochester. This happened again yesterday. The other three were found quickly, but Bam Bam was on the run for most of the day, and it was eventually spotted lying near a garage on Altadena Avenue. This was just late last night. Police say this is at least the third time that the cats have escaped, but again, they are back with their rightful owner and hopefully they will stay there. A new parking system has been or is set to be installed in the city of Royal Oak. New parking kiosks and a smartphone connected app will be available for drivers in downtown Royal Oak. The new app will allow users to find open parking spots and pay through the app. It also allows for five minute grace periods for street meters, 50 minutes for parking lots and officials say that the new system will make it easier and more accessible to pay and park. The fantastic part of this system is that there's a concierge service where if I preload money into this into the system, I can park my vehicle, go have dinner, come back to my vehicle and enjoy my day without touching the pay station, my app or anything else. It's a completely automated system. The new parking system is set to be completed this fall. Big shipping backlogs and rising prices might have you feeling a little anxious about the holidays and getting your packages out on time. Well, up next, the CEO of Best Buy weighs in on whether you need to be worried or not about getting those gifts. But first, thousands of UAW workers go on strike. Find out why they walked off the job at midnight at John Deere. 